Knowledge is power. Make an impact by learning more. Call us right now for more help at 866-945-8070. How to record loans in QuickBooks Online. Works pretty much the same as it does in QuickBooks Desktop. Just a different software application. Just looks a little different. Same idea. If I borrow money from a bank or some other lender, I'm going to receive money. It's going to show up in my bank account, right? We're going to increase my bank balance. And the offset to that has to be some liability account because I need to record the fact that I now have to pay somebody back, right? If I don't have to pay somebody back for it, that means it's income. That's the whole definition. That's the distinction between the definition of income versus a loan, right? So we have to record this in QuickBooks. Then we have to consider that as we're repaying that loan, there's two components of those repayments. There's the interest, which is the cost of the privilege of borrowing that money from somebody, and the principal, the reduction of the loan amount itself. So a lot of mistakes I see often, I see the books and pretty much the loan payments are just recorded against principal. We forget to pick up the interest, right? As soon as I see that there's a loan payable on somebody's balance sheet, almost immediately I run their profit and loss and just check to make sure there's interest expense on the books. And I'm also, you know, mentally, if it's if there's not a lot of different loan accounts on the books and credit cards, I'm trying to see does the interest amount kind of make sense in comparison to the amount of principal that's out there on their balance sheet, right? These are, it's, it, that's the auditor in me from my audit background. I'm trying to d- determine reasonableness. Does, does the amount of interest on the P&L seem reasonable considering how much they've borrowed, right? Sometimes the amount of interest is way too much. Sometimes it's not nearly enough. And I have a rough idea if I know that going rates right now are four or 5% and there's $100,000 of loans on the books, then I have a rough idea of what the interest should look like. Not exact because it's compounded. And as we make payments, the interest dollar wise is less. You know, I get all that. Hopefully you get all that. Now you get all that because I just told you. Um, But the point I'm getting at is we want to make we want to always be thinking when we're looking at the books about what we should expect to see and then ask ourselves is is, while we're looking at it, is this what we'd expect? If it looks very different from what we expect, then we probably want to take a closer look. But ultimately, as soon as I see that there's a loan payable on the books, then I want to make sure the interest is being recorded correctly. Now, before I go in and show you what this looks like in QuickBooks Online, I want to make another point. Now, in theory, when we write those checks to repay, to make those loan payments, those checks should be split as to how much of that payment is interest, how much is principal. You can't really memorize that transaction because it changes every month. Again, as I pay down more principal and I'm applying the same percentage interest rate to less principal, the dollar amount of the interest is less, which means the amount of principal that's being being paid off also increases with each payment that I make. The total payment is exactly the same, right? So as I go out in time, the interest amount is reduced and the principal amount that's being paid is increased and the two always still add up exactly to the total monthly payment. So what I prefer to do instead of splitting the payment up is record the whole payment against principal and then separately record the interest each month. What that does, and I'm going to show you this, is then when you look in the liability account, when you look at the transaction detail, right? You look at all the transactions in that account. Each month, it's really clean because you can see the full payment amount that was made reducing the principal, and you can see the full amount of the interest coming in, to which effectively increases that principal because now that's the offset. I'm increasing the principal to make up for what I sort of, you know, overdid by recording the whole payment to principal, right? Because again, really that payment should be split. So ultimately the amount of principal comes into balance. It ends up being right. But I have the entire picture, let's just call it, inside the liability account. If you're totally confused and lost, don't worry. I'm going to illustrate this right here in QuickBooks Online. So let's use the example of the $100,000 loan. I'm going to record a deposit, right? And I'm going to say loan payable Right, and I have a loan payable account here. Normally, I would name it like loan payable, you know, Wells Fargo, or whoever loaned me the money. Right, hundred thousand dollars. Okay, we're gonna say this happened back uh, on May first. Okay, and then let's take a look and see do, 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 what my balance sheet looks like. I like to look at this before I record the transaction because I want to see and understand that the transaction ultimately when I record it is showing up exactly the way I expect, right? 
So as of right now, there's no loan payables on the books. So as soon as I record this, I should see a loan payable amount for $100,000. And I should see my bank balance go up by $100,000. Let's hit save and close. Let's go here. Right, there was a negative, like almost 20000 in there from a previous uh, thing that I did. So now we have a positive $80,000 balance because we did, in fact, add the 100000 Don't believe me? Here it is. There's $100,000 going right into the bank on May 1st, right when we needed it too, right? Because we were down to 8100 and then we got that, and then we covered our payroll, right? Which was another video I did. So let's go back to our report summary. And the other piece we expect to see is, of course, loan payable on the balance sheet for $100,000. No matter how good I think I am at this stuff, I still always check because I make mistakes. I start typing loan and I get some other weird account and I go too fast and hit save and close. I wasn't paying attention, so I always check to make sure I didn't make some dumb mistake, right? I'm a dumb dumb. So... We now have the easy part done. Now we have to deal with the monthly payments. So before we have to deal with the monthly payments, and especially given that we want to record it the way I described, where we put the whole payment towards principal and then record the interest separately each month, we're going to want to spend some time doing something here, a little bit of planning, right? So here we have a spreadsheet template that I've created, of course. And I'm going to show you how you can get this. This one's not free. Sorry, guys. Not a lot of money, but it's not free. So took a lot of time and years and expertise and things. And I give away a lot of templates for free in a lot of my blog posts. So not this one. Not this time. So $100,000 loan amount. Okay. Let's say the interest rate is 4%. And then the term, let's say, is going to be, let's say it's two years, 24 months. Right? Depends on the bank, depends on the terms. As you saw while I was typing this stuff, the spreadsheet instantly calculates what your payment should be, right, and what your ending principal is, and we should see that it gets to zero exactly at the end of 24 months. Now, one word of caution, this will not agree exactly to what your bank gives you or, or calculates for you. It, sh it should be roughly close, but they compound it daily. So it's you get some differences in terms of rounding, essentially. So ultimately, you're going to want to confirm when you record this stuff that, your bank, that you're recording the amount that your bank uses, not this. But this is so you can get the entries done and get the idea and, of course, learn how to do it. So our first payment, let's say, because we started this, so the trouble started on May 1st. So let's say our first payment's going to be, well, we'll just call it May 1st. Um, really, it would be like June 1st, right? Uh, 18, something like that. So this first date can be changed, and all the dates below it automatically update from there. And now we have our first payment. So total payment's going to be 4342 because we're paying it off pretty quickly, right, in 24 months. So what we're going to do is as follows. First, we're going to record the payment out of the bank account. It's an expense, even though it's not really an expense. It's paying a liability. It's just called an expense. The pay is going to be the bank, of course. And we're going to call this loan payable for the account. And the amount, did I copy it? No, of course not. Why would I do that? Oops, there we go. And we paste that in. And so like I said, simple. Put the whole payment right through the liability on 5-1. Really, this is going to happen on 6-1, right? First payment's going to be borrow the money on May 1st. First payment comes due on 6-1. And then we'll record the interest next. So save and close, right? Looking at the balance sheet now, loan payable has been reduced by the full amount of that payment, which is not accurate. It should be reduced only by the principal portion of that payment. But like I said, instead of splitting the payment up, now we're going to record a separate entry. And I'm going to give you a journal entry. Right? So some of you are going to say, oh my god, journal entries, I'm not an accountant. Don't worry. Just follow the format. The format. Follow the, you know, the sort of, uh, well, the template for how we're doing this, right? We need to record the interest expense, right? And then we need to go into loan payable with it. Okay, the interest expense is the interest portion that we've calculated here. In this case, 333.33. That gets the debit. Don't worry about debits and credits. If you want to learn about debits and credits, go look for my blog post and video that actually introduces you to bookkeeping basics. I recently did one, Bookkeeping Basics with QuickBooks Online, and it'll explain to you everything you ever wanted to know and probably things you didn't care to know about debits and credits, right? But for now and for this purpose, just know that the interest is debited to increase the interest expense, and the same amount goes against, uh, goes not against you, it actually increases the loan, credits increase liabilities. So that's going to get the loan balance back to where it should be, 
right as of the date that we made the payment. So we're going to say save and close. And there it is. So now the loan payable should be 95,990,84. Now let me show you what I mean about why I like to do it this way. Because if I split the payment, right, all I'm going to see in the loan payable account is the principal portion of the payment. And all I'm going to see in the interest expense account is the interest portion from that same payment. What I get to see here, and I like this, is I see the full amount of the payment. So this is going to match what I see coming out of the bank account when I'm looking in here. And then I see this is the full amount of the interest expense. And of course, I should put memos in here so it's very clear this is the interest expense. Notice it's increasing the balance because we by, by recording the full payment amount, against the um, against the principal, we understated our liability and we also understated our interest expense. So this fixes that. This comes in and says, okay, we're going to uh, increase the loan payable back to where it should be so that it only reflects the interest portion. And that of course also picks up the interest expense properly on the profit and loss. So now if I run a profit and loss, we will see 33333 as interest expense on the books. So my friends, that's how to record loans in QuickBooks Online. If you want to get this template, it is right in my on my website, in my online store. Just browse over to templates right here under resources and you will find it. But of course, I've made it easy for you because I've linked to it in the blog post and I've linked to it in the very YouTube video where you may well be watching this. And if you want to, if you're watching this on YouTube, just check the description for the link so you can read the blog post. Maybe it'll fill in some gaps for you. And as always, if you're watching this video and trying to record a loan of your own, play a bit of the video, practice what you've learned, post what you need to in QuickBooks Online, then resume. And if you need more help, you know where to find me. So that's how to record loans in QuickBooks Online. Again, I'm Seth David from Nerd Enterprises Incorporated. As always, I hope you had some fun here and learned something along the way. I hope you're having an absolutely fantastic day, and I look forward to seeing you on the web.